something like this in uh, research papers. Uh, maybe um, something different than this, maybe something like this. So you would all have seen something like this. So what is these? These are structural models. And they can be or they are used in uh, modern research papers to evaluate, assess a relationship between constructs. Now, when a relationship is assessed between or the relationship may be assessed between indicators and a construct or it may be assessed between a different constructs. So whatever you are doing, you are actually developing or have developed a structural model. So the objective of structural equation modeling is to develop or is to identify, assess or ascertain the interrelationship between a different constructs that are part of your study. Now on this side, the one selected is a first order factor or it's first order factor analysis. And this is second order factor analysis or second order factor. So at the base of SEM, what you are doing actually is you are performing factor analysis and regression analysis. So it's a combination of both. So if you are developing or if you are assessing the interrelationship between all the constructs in your study. So you can normally or you can simply say that you have uh, developed a structural model. Now in this in the in the models you see you have got all the constructs in a study and you are actually developing a relationship between these constructs. In the next model which can be referred to as the path analysis you are actually looking at the impact of one variable on in this model what what you actually see is the covariance or how two variables are related with each other or how they covary and this model actually tells us or shows that there is a construct called innovativeness and it has got four dimensions product innovation, market innovation, process innovation and behavior innovation. But these models do not actually tell us how one variable is influencing the other. In order to assess how one variable influences the other, you need to conduct path analysis. And this is path analysis. Now these type of models, these ones, are normally your measurement models. So measurement models in a study are established to, or, or actually developed to establish the quality of constructs in your study. Whether or not your constructs are reliable and whether or not they are valid. However, structural models are developed to assess or establish the relationship between variants. Now let's go, let's let us let us go into further detail. What is SEM? It's a general statistical modeling technique used to establish relationship between variables. Now it's it is a combination of factor analysis and regression. Now at the same time, you are conducting a factor analysis by identifying whether a particular set of items, whether a particular set of observed variable actually adequately represent an underlying construct or not. And at the same time, you may be assessing the influence of one variable on another. So researchers previously, maybe a decade or two ago, they actually relied on univariate or bivariate analysis. What do you mean by univariate or bivariate analysis? Studying one variable at a time is a univariate analysis. Studying by two variables at a time, a bivariate analysis. But life is and research is not that simple. And organizations aren't that simpler either. So you've got there. There is a time when you need to assess complex relationship. Now, in order to comprehend more complex relationships associated with current research directions in the social sciences, it is increasingly necessary to apply more sophisticated multivariate data analysis models. Now by multivariate, we mean one that involves multiple variables. 
For instance, you can have two, two or three independent variables, two or three mediators, one or two moderators, and then maybe three or four or one or two dependent variables. And apart from that, you can have control variables as well. So now the purpose of SCM is to make sure that you can develop and establish complex relationship that was previously not possible through simple or multiple regression in SPSS. So this is why SCM, structural equation modeling is or was or is still utilized or was developed. So the one of the important or one important part of structural equation modeling is confirmatory factor analysis. And how does it differ from a previously uh, used exploratory factor analysis? So when applied to a research problem, a CFA, these methods can either or can be used to either confirm a priori established theories or identify data patterns and relationship. You might use a particular software or a particular method to test what you expect or what the literature has told you. For instance, you are interested in identifying or assessing the relationship between servant leadership and life satisfaction. Now, literature does tell you that they have got a positive relationship, but you need to check. So this is confirmatory factor analysis because you are already you already have uh, the data and you already know that what sort of relationship might exist between these two variables. So in this case, what you are doing is you are performing confirmatory factor analysis. But what if you conducted a study and you asked certain people from a university maybe or from an organization, what do they think about service quality? So they gave you maybe 50, 20, 50, 30, 40 indicators, for instance, 40 indicators as to what is service quality to them or what is service quality. So these 40, 50 indicators. Now, if you want to identify that whether these 40, 50 indicators can be clubbed together in any way, because that would give it more meaning that would make these factors or the construct service quality a more uh, uh, will, will make it more meaningful. So in that particular case, you perform EFA. Now, let's say, let me give you an example. Now, if you see this model or any of the model, initially this model started with one I I N N underscore P one I N N underscore P two I N N underscore P three up until I N N underscore B four. So initially, this model actually started with these indicators. These were, these were 22 indicators. Now, these 22 indicators by itself doesn't make any sense. So in order to make sense out of these, we, co we collected the data for these particular constructs as to what people think about these. And then based on the data, we perform EFA, exploratory factor analysis, whether these items can be grouped together through uh, uh, at, the, at, the, at the base of it is correlation analysis. So items that correlate highly are grouped together. So these first three items are actually related to product innovation. The next eight, 10 items are related to market innovation. The next three items are related to process innovation. The next four items are related to behavior innovation. And all these constructs, product, market, process, and behavior actually measure innovativeness as shown in the second order factor. So how do you know which items to group together and give them a name or identify them as a dimension? In order to do that, you need to conduct EFA. Uh, we will do EFA uh, hopefully uh, soon. Okay, now. Assalamu alaikum. Now, please, please turn off your mic. Turn off your mic. Sir. Now. So, specifically, uh, they are confirmatory when testing the hypothesis of existing theories and concepts, and exploratory when they search for latent patterns in the data. For example, you've got a number of items and you want to identify whether there are uh, certain patterns in the data, whether certain items can be grouped together uh, to represent a latent construct, so you perform EFA. But if you already have the variables and you know what sort of relationship exists between these variables, so what you do is you perform confirmatory factor analysis. 
and once you do not have or where you you have a little or or very little knowledge or prior knowledge about variables so it's more or less exploratory in nature so when exploratory factor analysis is applied to a data set the method searches for relationship variables with high correlations are grouped together between the variables in an effort to reduce the number of variables to smaller set of composite factors that is combination of variables so what you what you are actually doing in exploratory factor analysis is that you are grouping the variables together in order to represent them into smaller set of composite factors to give them an adequate representation to give them a, a name and make them more meaningful the final set of composite factors is a result of exploring relationship in the data and reporting the relationship that is or that are found so this is how efa differentiates from cfa one is exploratory in nature you do not have or you do not have any prior knowledge as to how variables may be related with each other or what combination of variable can represent or make up a particular factor but in cfa you you have the variables and you have a certain knowledge as to how these variables could be related with each other so cfa is about confirmation and efa is about exploration now measurement model and structural model so when you are performing scm structural equation modeling you are actually focused on developing two models the first is measurement model and the second is structural model the measurement model is part of the model that examines the relationship between latent variables what do you mean by latent variables variables that are unobserved that actually exist and that actually are represented by observed variables on which you have collected the data and their measures measurement models help establish the reliability and validity of the constructs now in this case n n underscore p1 i n n underscore p2 i n n underscore p3 these three are observed variables now these three observed variables help us measure product innovation product innovation by itself is latent unobserved in order to measure product innovation you need to ask these three questions i n n underscore p1 i n n underscore p2 and i n n underscore p3 and same is the case for the other dimensions as well now once you develop your measurement model and establish the reliability and validity of the constructs the next step is developing your structural model and in structural model what you are doing is you are establishing the relationship between these latent variables it is used it is utilized to assess the significance of relationship between latent variables i am interested in identifying how servant leadership affects job satisfaction i am interested in identifying how servant leadership affects organizational uh, citizenship behavior i am interested in identifying how servant leadership affects psychological climate now in order to i do this you have to develop your structural model so whenever you are doing scm the first step is your measurement model now measurement model looks totally different in comparison to your structural model in your structural model you will have single headed arrows while in your measurement model you will have covariances unless or until your measurement model is only focused on one variable with its sub dimension you will have single headed arrows pointing from your second order uh, construct or your second order uh, uh, latent variable to your first order latent variables otherwise it will have double headed arrows as in this case now so this is your structural model and what it tells is how one variable is related with the other variable so for instance this is uh, a structural model that we can test okay uh 